post office used to be right here in the little house. El pensamiento que corresponde con mi cultura, eso soy yo. This is the house where I grew up. El sufrimiento de una madre, joven o vieja, eso soy yo. There was eight of us siblings, and I lived in this house till I was about 18. And then I moved out. La historia nuestra, vieja o nueva, las tradiciones, eso soy yo. La resolana o trabajo duro, el de ranchero, eso soy yo. La resolana. Being now is the sunny side of a house is where musicians would gather in the springtime or, or in the fall or whenever, even in the summer, to uh, share the repertoire, to learn, to practice. The first experience with the Resolana was uh, probably about maybe seven, eight years old. At that time, of course, I didn't play. I would just go and listen. And sometimes, most of the time, they would chase me away. But I was persistent. And then as I started learning to play guitar, like maybe by 10, 11, or 12, then I was accepted. And I would go in there and, and play softly, you know, so I wouldn't bother, but at the same time I would learn something. It was a beautiful, beautiful experience. De un cuentero, un cancionero, el pensamiento, ese soy yo. One of the things that feels very important and excites us about playing traditional music is the rare opportunity simply to meet the generation that has come before us that has kept this music alive and graced us with the opportunity to also connect with this music. So when we had the opportunity to go to El Rito and meet with Cipriano Vigil and to play with him, it felt like a proper pilgrimage. A little while ago, some young musicians came to visit. They wanted to see what I was up to and also to share some of my music. I was honored to realize that our music is appreciated by other musicians all over the world. In the other room is where I have the the cigar box guitars that I've been building. I build them in three strings, four strings, six strings. And the three string ones, how are those? Uh, strong? They're strong like the three bottom strings of the guitar. Like, uh, let me see, where's the... <laughs> then they're electric and they come with their matching cigar box amplifier. Oh, man. So... <laughs> Do you have to smoke all these cigars before you... My wife does that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and this one here is my museum in a sense, you know. This is where I have all kinds of different instruments coming from a carbon fiber guitar. It's made special for me. Uh, this is another one that I made that I call the Flying V. <laughs> 
And then I made this uh, armadillo shell guitar as well, out of the shell of the armadillo. <laughs> My grandson told me, that looks like E.T. Grandpa. <laughs> And then this was here is the book that comes with 21 CDs, and each CD is about 90 minutes long, and these are recordings of people from 1960 up until recently. I kept recording everywhere that I went. All the old folks, they're gone now, but I captured them. What and communities did you go to when you were doing that? The whole state of New Mexico, the whole yeah. just New Mexico and Southern Colorado, wow. because that's part of the, the culture as well. And it took me many years, you know, and we're going out uh, to the homes and seeking out all the musicians. And then I captured the recordings, and like this was all rituals. The rituals for the weddings, the ritual for the baptisms, and the ritual for the uh, death. And you're probably familiar with that. When they have a wedding, they have entregas, they call them. And that's what this is, you know. But it has the three different uh, rituals. There's cuandos that were written here in New Mexico of the first black guys that ever came here. People had never seen a black man. Here. And they used to get in the truckloads just to go see him because they used to work at a sawmill. That's how they got came here. And people would wonder why they were black. You know, and the uh, stories would go around uh, that they had, were burnt. And uh, their jokes, you know, like, uh, like they would say that when God made people, uh, he first made the uh, Anglo-Saxon and took him out of the oven too quick. So he was white and then he put the other one and fell asleep and you burned him, you know. So then he put the Chicano, it's perfect time. <laughs> That's what we're about. <laughs> All these stories came out, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's songs like that, you know. Uh -huh. So that's, these are the recordings of those type of songs. I have a collection of over 320 instruments from all over the world, you know, and I play all of them. What I do is I go into the schools where I take about a couple of hundred instruments, put them on tables, and then I talk about the history, the origin, and then I demonstrate it for the kids. You know, and the kids, they learn about all this, and I expose them to this, yeah. Yeah. and they just love it. Yeah. And then there's several charangos, like this one that I have here, hanging here. Position that I wrote for the charango called the Porque el Joven Anda Fuera, which means that this man had a whole bunch of kids, but they're all out in the city looking for a job because there's no work around here, so he has to take care of all the animals. And uh, I'm sure you guys have heard of La Llorona, ¿verdad? You play La Llorona. Have you ever heard La Llorona really crying? I have her with me here, I can show you. Have the guitar and <laughs> Sabroso, 
Yo soy como el chile verde y olor picante, pero sabroso. <laughs> is your love of this music and your knowledge of it connected through your family, or is this something you found on your own? Well, I guess it uh, it was given to me in a sense by my father. Yeah. He was a musician. My grandmother she used to play the harmonica, which I remember as a little boy. She had this real, real tiny harmonica, and she would put it inside her mouth, and I was scared that she was going to swallow it all the time. You know? <laughs> She'd be making tortillas and, and playing the harmonica, you know, and swinging. And then my dad, uh, he was known as the Gene Autry of our culture because he was more into country music, you know. Wore um, cowboy boots, cowboy hats, and he could yodel like crazy. And, and, but he did a lot of songs in Spanish, you know. And then when, uh, but then he left, he abandoned us when I was about uh, seven, eight years old around there. So I had to teach myself how to do it. But I had it in my genes, you know. I used to sneak out of the house and go to the dances and I would make my way to where the musicians would be at. And I would stay there and I would take a little notepad, a little pencil, and I would draw the neck of the guitar and I would see where they played the fingers. Then I would take, make notes. Then I'd go home and I'd try to know a bit of guitar. This is how I taught myself. One time I snuck out of the house, took off to Peñasco, which was three miles from my hometown, from Chamisal. But between Peñasco and Chamisal, there was a creek that was famous for ghosts coming out there, appearing or things. And I was confronted by this white furry ball right in the middle of the road. And, and I said, ah, probably a cat. So I tried to shoot it away that they wouldn't bite. So I tried to go around it that they would move in front of me. I said, the heck with that, Dad. And I got scared and I ran that crazy back home through fields and fences, tore my shirt, but I got home. When I got home, my mamacita was waiting for me with the belt. You know? How they know everything, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> when she saw me all scared and asked me what had happened, and I told her, she goes like this to me and tells me, that was probably your guardian angel for disobeying me. And it must have been because that night, there was a huge fight in Peñasco. Rocks and chains and knives and people, a lot of people ended up in the hospital hurt. And, and that white ball saved my life, you know. So from there, I wrote a composition about that called La Bola Blanca. <laughs> That's the running. Al bailazo yo seguía sin pensar en la maldad que mi madre me advertía con su juego de piedad. Que el arroyo de agua, una bola blanca vi, entre más me retiraba, más se acerca veía a mí. ¿Dónde vas, hombrecito? ¿Dónde vas corriendo así? Me regreso a mi casita y una bola blanca vi. Al llegar a mi casita, a mi mamá pregunté, ¿qué será esa bola blanca que me sigue a donde esté? Es el ángel de tu guarda el que te hizo regresar Gracias a la bola blanca de casa te han de estar ¿Dónde vas hombrecito? ¿Dónde vas corriendo así? Me regreso a mi casita y una bola blanca vi Esa noche en el baile hubo golpes entre amigos Unos tres bien garroteados, otros quedaron en Gracias a la bola blanca, aunque entonces me asustó Ese terrible escarmiento, ahora sé que me salvó ¿Dónde vas, hombrecito? ¿Dónde vas corriendo así? Me regreso a mi casita y una bola blanca vi Española, across from Angelina's, on a bar stool, she took off her shoes. Her 
name was Lucilla. We drank some tequila. She sure could handle her booze. When the cactus juice hit her, she said, I'm no quitter, but I'm tired of living on beans. Now I know what you're after. That's not what I'm after. We have to casarnos or you won't get in my jeans. You picked a fine time to tell me, Lucille. Me alborotaste and now you won't give. Now I'm an old geezer and you're just a teaser. But you take the cake, you are real. You picked a fine time to tell me, Lucille. Morning, I saw her at the bar and I asked her, Will you marry me? She said, How soon? Before you could say nachos, we both got borrachos, we were off on our honeymoon. Fourteen years we've been married, I should be dead and buried because sometimes I wish I was dead. Now I really love her. But under the covers, this woman goes crazy. So last night I said, when are you going to leave me, Lucille? We have 14 children, and you won't go on the pill. You know I'm not working, and you keep on perking. I can't pay the hospital bill. When are you going to leave me, Lucille? When are you going? <laughs> My father used to build uh, violins out of the cigar boxes. I, I had a, a box that he had left there for many years, and then one day I decided to make it into a guitar. And when I did it, I liked the way it sounded. And then the idea occurred to me that it would be a beautiful project to do with the kids in the schools. My name is Cipriano Vigil, and I'm uh, here to uh, teach you, enseñarles how to build a cigar box guitar. Enseñarles cómo hacer una guitarrita, pero also, so I'll be bringing different instruments every time so you can be able to see them and hear them played. Como hoy traje la guitarra. That way you can be able to play different cosas. Okay, now this is a cigar box guitar. When is it? The, la tabla de la nuca, the, what I call the neck board. Luego, what I did is I drilled these holes aquí, verdad? I made those holes aquí, donde van ir los tuners, where the tuners will go, los afijadores. Luego, no, notice que Tienen los frets, los alambres que van aquí. The frets van así. The guitar box will be like this. Okay, and I make this notch here. I don't know where the neck is going to sit. And as I call you, you come and pick up your guitars. Here it is. There you go. I teach him how to build them how to play them, and they get to keep their instruments. They're all very excited about them getting something out of it as well, you know, and that's what they look forward to. They see that when they build it, it's going to be theirs. It'll take about uh, eight hours 
to finish the guitars. So we'll be meeting about an hour and a half a day, so. <laughs> it takes some time to finish them, but they get to do it with their own hands. So they get that creative aspect of it and the hands-on experience. Okay, now the next step is I'm gonna give you uh, some glue and you're gonna glue the box and we'll put a clamp on it and we'll let it sit until uh, Monday. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Right, okay. Entonces va a ir así, mira. Of course, I would assemble it as a kit where they would get to do the sanding and do the gluing of the neck to the box. And we hold it down and then we put a clamp on one side like this and another one on the other side. And we let it sit. Everybody, you can gather around here if you can see what you're gonna do. So the whole process is explained to them as they're working on their guitars. Put that one on the third hole. There you go. Then the thick one here. So one more. That's called the tailpiece, la cola. The middle one goes on the first one. Okay. And it goes in this side as well. Now we tune it. I'll turn it later on real good, okay? Next one. It's not only creative for the students, not only do they get that hands-on experience, but they get to learn to play the instrument and learn a few chords and a few strums of the traditional New Mexican folk music. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to play the guitar. First of all, in the chord chart that I gave you, you have three chords up on the top, okay? Hay tres acordes. Uno se llama G en inglés, en español o sol, en español le llaman. Para tocar the uh, third finger of the left hand, you place on the third fret of the guitar, ¿ok? Poniendo más un dedo y no le más un dedo. dedo así o nomás aquí. No, nomás en vez como está puesto el dedo de G. No, nomás en el... Nomás en el tercer traste es todo. Sí. Yeah. El waltz, el valse, va así. One, two, three, one, two, three. Alternate your bass, alternate la, los bajos. Primero la tercera, luego la segunda. One, ready, play. Bass. One of the main reasons in schools is just trying to keep the culture alive, the folk music of our culture. And where the, there are better place to teach this than with the kids, young kids in the schools. Look at this. When I see their faces light up when they're playing their instruments, especially when they know that their guitar is going to be there, words cannot explain that. You have to see it. That's my reward, seeing these kids enjoying it and knowing that they're starting to appreciate their culture, their music, and their background and who they are. And this is the most important part of the whole project. Smile, okay? My whole life has been that I've gone out looking for viejitos or musicians so I could learn songs. Hi, Mero. A little while ago, I went to visit Antonia Podaca, one of the best artists who has come out of New Mexico. Si 
had the opportunity to be in her house playing music with her, sharing music with her. She taught me various pieces. I taught her some pieces también, but this is what you want to share, to learn from each other, and at the same time, have a good time playing. Sí. Do it right. I was learning from you. Vale, no hacer otra vez. Yeah, yeah, no, yo no la había oído así. No, pues si no tocas conmigo, hey. eh, yeah. pues si más, pues por qué no agarra así para usted porque no tiene otro. ¿De cómo bajar a su familia pues de conmigo? ¿Me entiendes tú? No, pero es un, es un honor poder tocar con usted. ¿no? Gracias. Y naturalmente que estoy aprendiendo también. My whole life has been collecting music. I used to get my guitar, a little cassette recorder, and go out and seek all these musicians, give them about songs that they knew, and they would share them with me, and I would learn them. And this is what I've been doing for the most part of my life, collecting music and songs. Noah Martinez, one of the musicians who came to visit with me invited me to play the marriage entrega for his wedding. It was an honor for me to be invited by this young man. And I told him I would do a traditional entrega for his family. In a New Mexico traditional wedding, this was one of the most important parts because this makes it official in the eyes of the community. The ceremony makes it official in the eyes of God, but it also has to be done in official in the eyes of the community. And this is what everybody is accustomed to for the past 500 years that we've had weddings in Nuevo Mexico. Ave Maria dijo nave para empezar a volar. Entrega has three parts which are very important. The first part has verses based on the Holy Scriptures, words of advice from the Bible. Pues que los cuide mi Dios, Jesucristo los ampare, porque lo que Dios juntó, el hombre no los separe. Escuche usted la esposada, escuche con buen sentido. Ya no hay padre, ya no hay madre, ahora lo que hay es marido. The second part is advice by the musician given to the couple. Escuche usted la esposada, lo que le voy a contar. Tiene una princesa a su lado, no la vaya a abandonar. Señor Raúl Firol, a su hija ha entregado. No crea que perdió a su hija, sino un yerno ha ganado. Señora Beth. The third part are verses written for the guests who are witnesses to the wedding, telling them that just by being there, they have that responsibility to help out the couple. En el altar del cielo bajo un pintor para pintar su hermosura, señora Nora Martínez. De esto usted esté segura. Al señor Denes Martínez, no crea que yo lo ignoro. Ahí donde está sentadito, parece un granito de oro. Señora Felicita Martínez. Pues hoy se ve muy preciosa, ahí donde está sentadita, parece un manojo de rosa. Este versito que canto, lo dedico a los parientes, primos, hermanos y tíos, y a toditita esta gente. 
aquí dejo de trobar, pues no los quiero cansar. Gracias a la buena gente que me acaban de escuchar. ¡Que vivan los novios! Softly. One of the things that I love to do is performing with my family. I have my son and my daughter who I started training when they were five and seven years old. And now my granddaughter Marisol, my grandson Mitzael, and my youngest grandson, Alonso, they're starting to play. They still have a long way to go, but they're enjoying it, and that's what counts. And of course, my idea behind that is that after I'm gone, I want my son, Cipriano Jr. and Felicita, to continue teaching them these traditions so they won't die out. Engaños con la gente, hay enronias entre el amor. Entra el hombre cuartonero a las entrañas de la sierra, sacan todos los pinos y nos dejan sin madera, sacan todos los pinos y nos dejan sin madera. Las montañas de mi tierra en un tiempo de mi gente fueron cuando entraron las florestas toditito recogieron cuando entraron las florestas toditito recogieron se ve triste el hombre el hombre de la sierra pues destrozaron la naturaleza le quitaron el agua y su tierra pues destrozaron la naturaleza le quitaron el agua y su tierra En los tiempos de mi abuelo, cuando cercas no existían, de esta piedra que el pinito es la tierra mía, de esta piedra que el pinito es la tierra mía. Esos tiempos se acabaron, nos quitaron toditito, ahora nos miran y se ríen y nos ven como tontitos. Ahora nos miran y se ríen y nos ven como tontitos. Se ve triste el hombre, el hombre de la sierra, pues destrozaron la naturaleza, le quitaron el agua y su tierra, pues destrozaron la naturaleza. Nos quitaron el agua y la tierra. Se ve triste el hombre. Gracias. Thank you.
sharing the music with other different cultures, other different people, to me, that's a melting pot. Getting everybody to share the culture, to share the music, to share everything, because we're all humans. We're all in the same boat, in a sense. Even if we're different colors, different languages that we speak, and differences in the music, but in essence, we're just humans, and we can learn from each other in that respect. Se parece tanto a mí. 